Hello and welcome to this Minecraft Bedrock Engine tutorial with me, Groover. Now today we are going to be going all over mob spawning. Now as some of you may have noticed, the Minecraft wiki was recently updated to include mob spawning for Bedrock Edition. That's right, if you haven't seen it already, the information is out there and it is quite clear. So, this is a little tutorial which is going to tell you all about those conditions and how it works in the game. Now I should say all of these conditions are for 1.2.10 and they may change in the not too distant future. Now some of the things which I found in my previous tutorial for mob spawning, it seems like they're actually bugs because they are not in the Minecraft wiki. So hopefully we'll see some resolution to those in the upcoming editions. So let's get started. Okay, so the first most important thing is that mobs will spawn within a six chunk area of the player. So where I am here is right in the middle of a chunk. And as you can see going out behind me, I've got six chunks going out in a rough circle. And that is the mob spawning area. Outside of that area, mobs will not spawn. Okay, now if the tick range is smaller, i.e. four, which you can change at the moment, then the mobs will only spawn within the tick range. Okay. And as you can see down below me, I've got a little circle around me. This is to represent that there is a no spawning sphere around the player. And that is 24 blocks. And that is a sphere around the player. The actual um, mob spawning area is a cylinder. And that's going to run from 0 to build height. Okay. Now, mobs will only spawn in these locations if they've got a valid spot. Now, the valid spot depends on various things to do with the mob. Really about the height, the size, this and the other. Okay, another really important thing is that we now have confirmation that there are two types of spawn. There are surface spawns, which happen on the highest block in a XZ coordinate. So, for example, a spawn which happened right here on this iron block would be considered a surface spawn, because there is absolutely no block above it. However, a block or a spawn which happened down here would be considered a cave spawn. And that is because it has a block above it. Now, the type of block doesn't actually matter. If it's glass, if it's bedrock, it doesn't make a difference. The highest block in the column is considered the surface block. Now, if that block is non-spawnable, like I've got over there, glowstone, that is going to block the surface spawns in that area. So basically, what we can take from this is, it's good to have an open-air mob grinder. So the mob cap is set to 200. Which means if I had 200 mobs in range of my tick range, then I would get no other mob spawn in that area. However, if I left the area, the mob cap would suddenly be freed up and I would get new spawns. So that's kind of useful to know. If you've got a set of farming areas with lots and lots of stuff going on in them, you're probably not going to want to build your grinder there. Now another thing is that there is actually a density calculation. So I hypothesized about this in my last video about mobs. And there is actually a density calculation. So what happens is um, when a chunk is selected and it's having attempts made to spawn on it, before the attempt to spawn starts, what it does is it will check a 9 by 9 area around it. Now let's go over here and have a look at that. So if you imagine that when a spawn attempt starts, it starts off in this middle chunk right here. And that's within my mob spawning range, which we saw over there somewhere. And that is a selected chunk. When it actually goes to have a look at doing a spawn, it will check the 9x9 nine nine area around that chunk and see what the density of mobs are in that area. Okay, and it will check it for all the different types, but the one that we're really interested in here is monster spawns, because that's, that's what people want to know about particularly. So it's going to check that entire area, and it's going to check it against the density cap. And the density cap is 8 on the surface and 8 in cave. So you've got a density cap of 16 only within this huge area. So basically what it's trying to do is make sure that you don't end up with a load of mobs in one place that are going to swamp you and none elsewhere. However, this does mean one really, really important thing, that... This particular selected block could be inside the, the, or is going to be inside the mob generation range. However, some of these chunks out here might not be. So it's going to check chunks outside the tick range for density. Now this is where we get those kind of results where we think, oh, it's counting mobs outside. It kind of is, but it kind of isn't. So all this doing is it looks outside 
in these chunks here and if it finds 10 mobs in there above ground and 10 mobs in there below ground then it's met its cap and it's not going to try and spawn on this particular block and then it will move on to the next block and do exactly the same check again in that 9x9 area just sort of shift it over then and this is where we get those slightly odd results about mobs seeming to count towards the cap they don't count towards the cap they count towards a density cap for those particular outline regions so another thing with the density cap is it's different per dimension and it's different per mob type. So you've got the monsters and you've got the animals and all that kind of thing and they've got different mob caps. But we're going to talk about monsters in particular. Now if we're talking about the different dimensions then in the end we're going to say there is 10 on the surface. There's a cap of 10 mobs on the surface and 18 caves. And in the nether where there is a bedrock roof there is zero surface monsters. So there's zero surface spawns for monsters in the nether, but there are 16 in caves. So it kind of balances out to the overworld because everything is underneath the bedrock roof. So that's kind of useful to know. Okay, so on to despawning, um, which is a little bit of a misdirect from my last video. Mobs do despawn. Now, there's certain conditions that need to be met for this, and the main condition is that they have to be beyond 54 blocks from the player. So if I was stood here, the ring that you see around the outside there is 54 blocks away, and that marks the despawning area. Outside of that area, mobs can despawn, but they'll only despawn if... They are non-persistent mobs, for starters, so ones which haven't been name-tagged and all that kind of thing, or things like the Ender Dragon, they're not going to despawn if you leave the area. They're only going to despawn if they're being ticked, so they have to be in a ticking area to despawn. Out there in that non-ticking area, for example, they are not going to despawn. And the light level has to be higher than 7, or 7 and higher, more specifically. Now, that is the main reason that my test failed, was because I only tested it at night. It didn't occur to me that lighting would be an issue. So this really drives it home that you have to light up all of your caves, just regardless. Just light up all your caves. And even if there are mobs there, there is a chance that they're going to despawn if you're hanging around that area. Okay, so what it does is there is a 1 in 50 chance that a mob will despawn per tick. And it's kind of choosing one mob in a chunk randomly and trying to despawn that mob. And if it fails, it fails, the mob stays. If it doesn't, then, you know, it's fine. Now, this would explain a little bit about how mobs gather around the edge of your ticking area. Because they're not necessarily despawning, but they're wandering into the non-ticking area and becoming non-ticked. And they don't have a chance to despawn. So, yeah, that's kind of what's happening there. Mobs wander out, they get into the non-ticking area, they become persistent. So when you wander out of that area, you'll suddenly find a heck load of mobs hanging around the outside, which is a bit of a pain. Okay, so just before I go to the conclusion of this and actually give a few sort of headline points about the whole spawning kind of thing... Um, let me just say, if you've been enjoying this, if you found this useful, drop me a like down below. And if you've got any questions, drop me a comment. Always useful, and it helps the channel quite a lot. Now, to me, the absolute most important thing is this density check. This density check is absolutely huge. And the fact that it can check outside of the ticking area for mobs in non-ticking blocks is a big big problem. Now I think that the, the Mo Yang is aware of this and they are probably going to make some changes in the upcoming releases but um, just to outline this problem like I said with the despawning if a mob doesn't despawn and it wanders into a non-tick area it's still going to count towards the density cap for this area which is it's a massive problem. So yeah you've got to really think your way around that. Everything else is pretty straightforward. So another take home message is about lighting up these areas. So if you're going to have a mob grinder, you could maybe have a mob grinder over here in this almost immediate area, but you are going to want to light up that nine by nine area around it. So you want to get as much of it in the ticking area as you can so that mobs are going to despawn and you know out there if they're getting collected in that non-spawning area or that non-ticking area then they're going to become a problem to spawning mobs out there so at the moment i sort of feel like you kind of want to find the the sweet spot as close to the player as possible like maybe even this chunk but then mobs in this chunk are going to affect a chunk over there so yeah we need to do some some ideas on this and work out what the best way of doing things is because we don't want to be building huge unbelievably big perimeters just to get some basic mob grinders up and running 
because already this is quite a sizable perimeter. I mean, it's nothing like a Java perimeter, but it's getting there. It is quite a big area. And there we go, guys. That is it. That is everything that I've got to say about mob spawning today. So I'd just like to say thank you to the Mojang team for updating that Minecraft wiki because that makes a huge difference to us. We can actually get into what's going on in the game and start doing some of our technical things that we absolutely love. So finally, one last thing. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this useful. Also, drop me a comment if you've got any questions. So thank you very much and hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.